As the teams take the floor, Brad, Georgia Tech is going to get a timeout. We could be here a while. <laughs> Thank you. Do you see 11 seconds? That's the time left in the game. There are seven seconds left on the shot clock. So even if Georgia Tech took it to the very limit and were able to score, North Carolina would still have four seconds to try to score themselves, and they do have a timeout with which to stop it. Georgia Tech out of timeouts, as you see there. And that's, I think, a dangerous situation to be in against North Carolina, as well as they can defend that inbounds play. We saw Georgia Tech do a nice job, get the five-second call. There's the shot clock with seven seconds. But Georgia Tech did a nice job defensively, got the five-second call against North Carolina. So if you're Bobby Kremens planning strategy, the first thing you've got to worry about is getting the ball in bounds. And lots of times in this kind of a situation, regardless of what you draw up as Bobby Clemens, regardless of what you draw up as Dean Smith, once the players get out there, they do their own things. And in a kind of situation like this, sometimes it's not the guy who shoots the ball that wins the game, but a lot of times it's the fellow with the tip in. So North Carolina's got to play good defense and make sure they block out. The man that wants the ball in this instance will inbound. That's Dennis Scott. He gets it into Oliver. In low, trying to get it to Hammonds. Hammonds finally picks it up and a foul. Or did Hammond step on the line? The ball went out of bounds. The ball was ruled out of bounds off Tom Hammonds. That was, and so now North Carolina is going to call a timeout to try to set up. There's only eight seconds left in the basketball game. Now, this is the play Georgia Tech ran to beat Maryland a couple of weeks ago to Brian Oliver, then inside to Tom Hammonds. That is a great defensive play by J.R. Reed to come around and knock the ball away without fouling. Tom Hammonds not able to pick the ball up. Bobby Kremens up off the bench telling his team to foul. But they're going to have to get a foul quickly. We'll see who North Carolina brings out of their huddle. As we mentioned, they have missed only two free throws all night. And Georgia Tech's out of timeouts. Another thing to keep in mind. Well, now, another thing to consider is the last time that North Carolina had the ball out of bounds in this situation, leading by 72 to 71. They couldn't get it inbounds. Georgia Tech forced the five-second call. So that's the kind of defense Georgia Tech would love to see again. And if North Carolina does indeed get it on the court, Georgia Tech will foul either Kevin Madden, Rice, Lebo, Reed, or Bucknell. There's the five out for North Carolina. And full court pressure by Georgia Tech. Bucknell will be the man fouled by Tom Hammonds. And that's not a bad choice, although Georgia Tech didn't have much of an opportunity to pick anybody. Well, I was going to say it's not a bad choice, but I was thinking about Madden's free throw percentage, not Bucknell. Yeah, Bucknell's about 76. That's right. Scott Williams comes back in. North Carolina, 14 of 16 from the free throw line tonight. Well, if you're Dean Smith, you don't coach 28 years and win 660 games without having something upstairs. And he had his worst free throw shooter take the ball out in a situation where he knew as soon as the ball got inbounds, there would be a foul. Bucknell at the free throw line. As Dan said, a 76% free throw shooter. If he misses, Georgia Tech has seven seconds to come down court and get a shot. Even if he makes, they get seven seconds. That's right. And he hits it. And with Dennis Scott in the ball game, Georgia Tech's not done yet, even if he makes this. A two-point difference now. Dean Smith is telling his team to, to foul. foul. That's right. He's telling his team to foul. He doesn't want any three-pointers. Bucknell, his second is good. That might ice it. Tech will try to get it in the hands of either Brian Oliver or Dennis Scott. They're going to foul Carl Brown instead with five seconds to go. I would think Brown tries to make the first and miss the second. Of course, we can only coach so much over here. And those guys on the other side, including that man and that man, do it much better. Nice job by Dean Smith right there. Very nice. Good work by our folks to pick up Dean Smith, telling his people to foul. He doesn't want any three-pointers. Carl Brown, four for five from the free throw line tonight. Of course, he's got to make the first one to even set this up. And he does. Now, what you got to do, a 
lot of people, they just try to throw the ball up there on the miss. So Carl Brown's got to be real careful that when he shoots the ball, he doesn't step across the line because the shooter can't go across the line until the ball hits the rim. Everybody else can go when he releases the ball. So the shooter has to be very disciplined in this situation. Bobby Kremen just called his team if Carolina gets the rebound to foul them. And oh. Brown hits them both. second on the clock now two ticks left and this is plenty of time Madden loads it and fires it Fox at the buzzer it doesn't go and Georgia Tech has picked off North Carolina here at the Thriller Dome and Bobby Cremens and Dean Smith shake hands Dennis Scott with an unbelievable shot with two seconds to go and Georgia Tech is upset number five North Carolina your final score, the Yellow Jackets 76, the Tar Heels 74. Match the thrills that were had last night as the Jackets stunned North Carolina 76-74, a night packed with emotion. It was amazing. The whole thing was amazing. I'm just dreamed. Yes, it was that kind of a night, and the emotion was evident even before the opening tip. It was Tommy Hammond's last game with the Thriller Dome, and the senior, known for his stern game face, allowed himself a pregame ear-to-ear -ear grin. He would have his jersey retired. Forever it would hang from the rafters at Tech. This is a gift. I mean, having my number retired and, and uh, things like that is just a great gift. Uh, I'll come back when I'm an old man with, with, a, with a beard and, and gray hair. I'll still see my number up there, and I'll still remember that, that this game and, and how I went out in style. It was a first-year jacket who set the stage for Hammonds to end his four-year stay in style. Carl Brown, the junior college transfer, went to the line with Tech down by three, five seconds left. He would hit both free throws, putting Tech down by one. Hits them both. And the inbound pass stolen by Scott. He scores! Dennis Scott has scored for Georgia Tech. At that play, I was going for the ball because I was in front of him. And see, he was like a step ahead of him. I was in front. I reached out and hit the ball. It was a clean steal. At first, I wasn't sure, but then as the fight, the fight of the ball was close to the bass, and I knew it was going in. Dennis made a great steal, clean steal, absolutely clean steal. Got the ball and made an incredible shot. And uh, it's wild. It's absolutely, totally wild. Tech had the game, and the students had the court, and they had Tommy Hammonds on their shoulders. And this was a night they will long remember. 